Academic degree, initial leadership experience, now you want to drive forward your career in Germany? The Alexander von Humboldt Foundation is searching for the leaders of tomorrow from Brazil, the USA, Russia, China, India and South Africa. The German Chancellor Fellowship offers you an opportunity to take the next career step in Germany, irrespective of your field of work. In order to apply, develop your own project idea and find the host of your choice to mentor you. Once your host has confirmed, you can apply for a fellowship. Beatrice, for example, is a journalist who is looking to raise awareness for the global topic of migration in her home country of Brazil. She found her German host in an NGO and plans to write a blog on her project as well as to produce stories for the Brazilian media. Or Zai, he's an economic expert who worked on a project to promote German-Chinese business relations in environmental technology. Today, he's a project manager with a strategy consultancy firm, controlling activities in the renewable energy sector in emerging markets like China. Fellows get by perfectly well in English, but thanks to a free intensive German course and daily practice, their German improves constantly. Financially, they don't need to worry, because the fellowship pays quite enough to live well in Germany. And that's not all. Fellows attend conferences together and go on a study tour Meet the Federal Chancellor, the patron of the program, and make valuable contacts both in Germany and amongst the other international fellows. Would you also like to come to Germany on a German Chancellor Fellowship? Then just find out more. Bom dia! Eu gostaria de, em nome da Câmara, dar as boas-vindas a vocês que estão assistindo a gente aqui ao vivo, e bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, caso você esteja assistindo a gravação dessa transmissão, para se informar sobre a Bolsa Chanceler para futuros líderes do Brasil. Meu nome é Stephanie, eu sou a diretora de comunicação da Câmara Brasil-Alemanha, e vou ajudar a guiar essa transmissão hoje, com o objetivo da gente tirar o máximo de dúvidas que vocês têm sobre o programa. É, eu gosto de fazer essa primeira introdução aqui em português para que a gente possa explicar novamente o porquê é, da gente fazer essa transmissão em inglês. Como vocês sabem, a Bolsa Chanceler ela oferece né, um ano que vocês possam desenvolver um projeto de vocês na Alemanha. Então, o alemão não é algo que é obrigatório para que vocês participem, mas, claro, o inglês é, porque vocês precisam se virar durante um ano na Alemanha e desenvolver esse projeto lá. Por causa disso, a gente faz essa live em inglês também para que vocês consigam entender todos os termos, vocês consigam é, já entender qual vai ser é, a importância de vocês falarem o inglês e por que, que ele é exigido nessa bolsa. Então, com essa primeira explicação, eu agradeço de novo a presença de todos vocês aqui e gostaria já de passar para o inglês, ligar o switch e chamar aqui os primeiros dois convidados que vão conversar com vocês. So, um, I'd like to welcome Josef Weiss, the Deputy Council uh, General of São Paulo, um, of Germany here in São Paulo, and of course, um, Dr. Christian Roschmann, the member of the Selection Committee. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Welcome. Um, thank, you for us. thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Weiss, I'd like to start with you and uh, please you have the floor to talk um, about the, the, the fellowship and to greet everyone on behalf of the consulate who is, by the way, a very big partner of ours and of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation in this journey of promoting this fellowship here in Brazil. So thank you once again and please the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. Bon dia a todos e a todos. Good morning to everybody. I am uh, very pleased to be with you at this important event. First of all, I would like to thank all the organizers of making this uh, meeting possible, the Chamber of Commerce of Sao Paulo, the Alexander von Humboldt Stiftung and the Selection Committee and all the people uh, involved. I hope that we can return soon to presential meetings which we had in the German residence in Sao Paulo before the pandemic. 
let me tell you something about the importance of the German Chancellor's Fellowship in our foreign policy. The starting point is that we live in a highly interdependent world with serious challenges that need worldwide mobilization of brains and character. This is why we reach out to the best people, people who have a genuine interest in knowing other countries, people who want to develop their own ideas in cooperation and discussion uh, with other cultures. We want to get in contact with and to promote young, bright and engaged professionals with the ambition to make an impact and to change things for the better. We call them thought leaders. Brazil is one of the few countries eligible for this program. It is in the same category as the US, China, India and South Africa. We appreciate Brazilian creativity, curiosity and flexibility and we know also that they are excellent team players. We want to offer them space for developing a personal project and to grow as a professional and also as a person. The participants of the program will be part of an excellent and competitive network of like-minded uh, professionals with all over the world. After over 30 years of experience in diplomacy around the world, I can assure you that being part of a network of brilliant, open-minded and visionary people is a key element of success and a precondition for a better and more sustainable solutions. The second important aspect is bridge building. The German Chancellor's Fellowship is a bilateral program financed by the German Foreign Office and executed by the uh, Alexander von Humboldt. It allows us to build on the shared experience of a long-standing and fruitful relationship of friendship and cooperation that goes back to 1824 when the first Germans arrived in Brazil. We want to deepen this relationship by offering excellent working conditions for fellows. We want to give promising Brazilians a chance to know our country better, to travel, to make friends and their own experiences. We as Germans also want to benefit from the intellectual exchange and personal contributions of Brazil. In a nutshell, it is a high level program for ambitious young professionals eager to improve things and with a capacity to inspire other people. It is one of our most powerful foreign policy instruments to make a contribution for a better world. Unfortunately, I am too old to apply, but I can assure you that I envy everyone who has the opportunity to take part in the scheme. All I've heard from participants strengthen my conviction that this is one of the best foreign policy instruments Germany has on offer. Let me conclude by wishing all the best for the event and by encouraging our young Brazilian friends to massively apply for the Bundeskanzler Stipendium with self-confidence and conviction. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Weiss. Um, it's always very interesting to have you as consulate here and to acknowledge the importance of this program and the opportunity that these young Brazilians have and uh, how they can use it at most and why they should use it. And I think this why is also something that Dr. Roschmann could tell us. He's the member of the selection committee. And uh, Dr. Roschmann, please uh, feel free. And um, I think it would be interesting also to hear what actually the selection committee is and what they do uh, as an introduction to everyone who's hearing us today. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Mr. Weiss. It's really uh, listening to you, to the film at the beginning and what you said uh, um, depicts a little bit um, the, the 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 pressure uh, 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 the select selection committee members are under. We are actually in charge of selecting the brightest guys we can possibly identify in Brazil to build bridges and to become a key bridge in between Brazil and uh, Germany in any area you select to be uh, uh, active in. And um, uh, as you heard from Mr. Weiss, this is the most important tool or one of the key tools 
Germany as a country has to build bridges on the long term. Bridges are not built within a day. Bridges are built over generations. Germany is for many, many years already present in Brazil, be it culturally or be it in industry. And um, the program, I think, started uh, in 80, in the early 90s, uh, with uh, beginning with the United States and then developed over time into other countries and for the last five or six, seven years also, including people from Brazil. And this is a long-term program where we are, uh, I'm one of the five members of the selection committee who are in, yeah, in, 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 not in charge, but who are asked to possibly identify the best fits uh, of individuals who fit that program. And as you will have heard, it doesn't matter which area of expertise you are in. It is um, also important that you have, of course, a good an interesting project, but the most important thing is, is you. <laughs> we are, uh, 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 or the German government rather, is investing in young put leaders or individuals who are potential leaders in the future. Um, uh, and, and now you can imagine how difficult uh, it is and what a responsibility lies upon the shoulders of the selection committee members to identify that person. Of course, when we, we will always read and we very carefully read the application form, we will read the project, and then we will have interviews, hopefully soon again in person. Um, and in those interviews, uh, we will try to identify um, uh, individuals um, of whatever background you are, whatever culture you are, uh, uh, wherever, whatever region you are, um, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, I'm, for example, I'm a lawyer, uh, but uh, <laughs> Most of the candidates we took are not lawyers, by the way. <laughs> they are from all, uh, all different areas. Uh, it can be culture, it can be anything. It doesn't really matter. It is the individual who matters, who has and should have the potential to become a leader in Brazil going forward and being at the same time a bridge builder. Um, uh, and this is what we are trying to identify when we speak and when we interview with you guys uh, uh, early next year. Thank you, Dr. Roschmann. I think that's a very nice introduction. And I think you tackled some of the questions that we got uh, forehand. Some of the people who are watching us, they subscribed on Simpla and they had the opportunity to send their questions um, to us. So I already have a bunch of them written down here. I think you tackled some of them. and. Um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, Q&A session in a bit. First of all, uh, thank you so much again for participating here. Um, on behalf of the Chamber, it's very um, nice for us to have you here as, as a support and um, to once again say how important this opportunity is and how interesting this opportunity is for German leaders. And We'll see each other in a bit again during the Q&A session. Uh, I'd like to call out now Sarah Ten Brinke, Dr. Sarah Ten Brinke, who is going to explain to us and is going to do a presentation on the program. So I think um, most of the questions that you might have are going to be answered right now by Sarah, but please if you uh, don't understand something or if you have a question during uh, the presentation, write it down on the chat. We are looking at it attentively and we're also picking out the questions from there. And uh, please uh, feel free to do that. And Dr. Sarah Tendrinke, once again, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here and the great opportunity as well to tackle all the questions directly from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. Uh, so, welcome. The floor is yours. I'll share your presentation now. Thank you, Stephanie. And bon dia to everyone. Um, as Stephanie said, my name is Sarah Den Brinke. I work at the selection department of the uh, Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. And I'm here today to tell you a bit more about the specifics of this program and also to answer any questions that you might have. 
But uh, before I start, I too would like to uh, give a very big thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for organizing this event. It's always something we look forward every year to, and it's always a pleasure and an honor to participate in this very professional information event. And uh, I'm very sure that we would never reach as many talented young Brazilian leaders if it were not for the support of the German Chamber of Commerce in Sao Paulo. So thank you very much for organizing this and for having me here today. So um, I would like to start to tell you a very little bit about the foundation that hosts this program, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. We uh, are named after Alexander von Humboldt, who lived in the 18th and 19th centuries and who was a famous German scholar. Maybe you have heard already about him. He was also in South America on a big uh, trip. And he was also very uh, known for his engagement in supporting younger scholars within their career development. And that's why the name fits very well to our foundation. We exist in our current form since 1953 um, and we are given the task, as already addressed before, by different gen uh, German federal government agencies to identify and fund the best international researchers and young leaders and to invite them to come to Germany. And for us as a foundation, the idea of the network is very central to our work. Um, and we want our alumni not only to stay in touch with us and with their hosts in Germany, but also with each other and to form connections with people from all over the world. And that's why we also put a lot of support in, in, in the alumni programs that we have. And our network by now counts about 30,000 Humboldians, as we call them, who are all over the world. And that's a very special network that we cherish. And although our, most of our programs and most of the people we sponsor are academics and scientists, we also have one very special program, which is not necessarily for scientists and academics, but is for future young leaders. And that's the German Chancellor Fellowship. And that's what I want to tell you a bit more about today. So as I said, the idea of the network is very central to our work. And here you can see our specific German Chancellor Fellowship Network. And you can see that by now we have already almost 700, or I think more than 700 alumni. And as Mr. Roschmann also already addressed, the program uh, developed from country to country. It was gradually extended, and that explains why the numbers are different per country. And you can see the US has most alumni because it's been going on there the longest. And as you maybe can see, South Africa does not have alumni yet. We have the first fellows from South Africa at the moment in Germany, but we don't have fellows yet, uh, alumni yet. Brazil joined in 2013 together with India. And at the moment, we already have over 50 alumni in Brazil. And this is something that I want to point out to you these are people who you can try to connect with and uh, if you have questions or if you need help because they have gone through it and they know the experience. And we are also very happy that we have two of them here today with us who will also join their experiences uh, because I think that's also very valuable because they are the people who actually went through it and can tell you about it. So please feel free to reach out to them. So. Who are we looking for? We are looking for accomplished young professionals and promising university graduates. So you need to have one degree from university um, and maybe also already some working experience, although that's not definitely necessary. What is very important is that you are interested in international issues. So we want to see that you have an interest in connecting internationally because that's the very foundation of this project. We would also like to see that you have some initial proven leadership because we are looking for the leaders of tomorrow. So as uh, uh, Mr. Roschmann already said, we have to base that on some idea. We have to be able to see this person has the potential to become a future leader. And uh, it has to be clear to us that you will become a prospective decision uh, maker or a multiplier in the field you work in. 
And uh, about this field you work in, this is actually one of my favorite things about the program, is that there is no limitations what field you can come from. Whatever you studied in your first degree, whatever your area is, as long as you have some, some initial leadership experience and you are a promising young leader, whether you are in, the, in, the, in politics or in public administration, whether you're in business or economics, whether you're in science or media or society or culture, this program unites people from all these areas and brings them together um, because um, that's also the beauty of it, to bring different people from different areas together to work together. So that's very nice that there's no restriction whatsoever where you come from. The only important thing is that you have one university degree. So I would like to tell you something about the financial benefits of the fellowship. And because we are looking really for the best and for the most promising young leaders, we also want, of course, to offer something in return. And that's why we have for German standards a quite a high monthly allowance. Um, how high exactly it is, it depends on your level of working experience that's then calculated if you, if you get the fellowship. I don't know if you have a feeling for euros, what euros mean, but I can tell you that for 2,600 euros, you can live very well in Germany and you really don't have to worry about money. And uh, because we also want to support you in case you have a family and you want to bring your family to Germany with you during your fellowship, we also have very family-friendly arrangement uh, with, with family allowances. And if you have a project that um, would be interesting to have a stay in another European country, for example, to compare it with Germany or depending on your topic, it makes sense to spend a few months in another European country. That's also possible. And you also get a specific European allowance for that. So in general, it's a very generous um, fellowship and it really allows you to do what you want to do here and not to have to worry about the money. And next to these allowances, um, we also offer an intensive German course because as Stephanie said at the beginning, it's not a precondition to uh, get um, into the program, but because we want you to become future bridge builders be between Germany and uh, Brazil, it is important to us that you learn German if you don't speak German yet. And for that, we offer a for you free intensive German course here in Germany. And uh, the nice thing about the program is also, as I said before, that you don't, you will not only meet Germans, you will not only meet your host, but you will also meet the fellows from the other countries and you can get networks with them and have long lasting relationships with them also. And for this interaction, we offer a few um, events during the year of your fellowship um, to, to, to make it easier to connect and for you to get to know each other. And there is, for example, network meetings. There's also an annual meeting where everybody who is sponsored by the foundation comes together. And there's a very special final meeting only for the German Chancellor Fellows, where you also get to meet the German Chancellor. And I brought you a few images of that. And the past few years have given together a bit a historic um, image. Uh, so I wanted to to show that to you. This is the, the meeting with the German Chancellor in 2019, as we were used to before we knew what COVID-19 meant. And then, as you might be able to imagine, in 2020, the final meeting looked like this, everybody in their little Zoom boxes. And the final meeting of last year looked like this, everybody at the chancellery again, but within outside and with enough room. So I think this is a, a very historic sequence of pictures. And of course, I hope very much that by the time you get here, if you get a fellowship, the picture will be able to look more like the one in 2019 again. Let's be hopeful for that. So what do you need if you want to apply? You need the citizenship of one of the countries uh, that uh, are available for the, for the program. So Brazil, 
USA, India, China and South Africa at this, in this year. Um, you need to show us that you have initial proven leadership experience and very important, you need a project plan for one year of one research project that fits well into your career ideas, that fits well into where you come from, what you want to do in Germany, what you are going to learn from that for your future career. And this has to be confirmed by a host in Germany who wants to support you and to mentor you to do this project. I will still in the next slide talk a bit more about this host because that's one of the more tricky parts of applying for the fellowship. Um, but so you need to agree your project with a host who can, who can support you here in Germany. And uh, we need two letters of recommendation of people uh, who have seen you the past few years, who can attest to your leadership potential, who can say something about what kind of person you are, what potential you have to also help the selection committee make their decision. And as I said before, you need the first academic degree and this cannot be completed more than 12 years ago. So we don't have an age restriction, but we have a restriction how long ago your first academic degree uh, can be, and that is so as not to um, negatively impact people who studied later in life. Um, I'm sure that we will talk about this also later. There might be questions about it. So if you have questions, feel free to ask them. But these are the entry requirements for you to be able to apply. So as I said, a bit more information about the host. You, you need to find a person in Germany who says, yeah, this is an interesting project. I want to support this person. A host can be anybody who works in a public or private institution in Germany, but they must be related to your area of your project because they will be like a mentor who will help you if you have difficulties, who will connect you with other people in Germany and who will support you content-wise to um, realize your project. So that is important. And uh, it is also one of the most difficult parts of applying because of course it's not always so easy if you don't have networks in Germany yet, if you don't know anybody in Germany, where do you start and how do you find them? So that's uh, what we always put a bit more emphasis on to, to try to make you aware of this. And uh, one of the very important things is to start as early as possible looking for a host. So uh, this event this year is a bit later than normally because we didn't want it to be in the middle of the Brazilian holidays. But if you want to apply this year, we recommend very much that you try to find a host as soon as possible, that you start reaching out to people because we are also going to the German holidays now, so it might take a bit longer before people reply to emails. Um, so that is important. Start as early as possible. And there is also some help for you uh, in finding a host, for example, on our website, which you see the link here, and I'm sure that we can also post it in the chat. Um, we have a page with examples of institutions where host worked from previous fellows. We have letters that explain the fellowship and that explain what it means to be a host in both English and German that you can attach to an email that you send to somebody who you would like to host you. And as I said, there are quite many alumni in Brazil already. I know that there are also LinkedIn and Facebook pages. Maybe then our alumni who are here today can also say something about that. You can reach out to them and ask how they did it, with, whether they have connections or ideas, whether they can help you find somebody in Germany. And what you can also think of is if you know somebody who works at, at a German uh, company in Brazil, you can try to reach out to them and see whether they can connect you to somebody with the sister um, company in Germany or whether they have connections to Germany. So these are a few tips uh, on how you can find a host um, but I'm quite sure that we will talk about this more also later with with Barbara and Bech who are here as our alumni today. So I'm getting to the end of my presentation. Um, I still wanted to show you something which looks very complicated but just so that you have an idea um, of the timeline. 
So the call for applications is open. You can apply at the moment. You can register online at our website and then complete the application as you go. You can always save your things. And then when you have everything together, you can send off your application. This has to happen until the 15th of October. We have a very hard deadline because then we have to get on with the selection process. So everything has to be there by the 15th of October. If you don't manage that, then you'll have to wait a year for the next year. So this is a very important date to keep in mind. And then uh, we go through the whole selection process uh, with the pre-selection and selection by the selection committee. And uh, the final selection will be in European spring next year. So that's usually April or a beginning of May. And then you would hear whether you got the fellowship or not. If then you get the fellowship, then, um, then you can come to Germany. Actually, whenever it suits you, you have to talk with our sponsorship department. We have become more flexible there. Um, as I said before, we recommend very strongly that you do a three-month German intensive language course here in Germany. And for that, we recommend the months July through September. I always say recommend because uh, it is quite flexible. You can you can shape it according to your own needs and your commitments in Brazil. And when you can come here, this, the, the table that I show you here is our recommendation because that's when most people do it. And that gives you most chance to also meet other fellows and to participate. For example, this German language course from July to September is with other fellows. If you do it then a bit earlier or a bit later, it could be that you are doing it on your own. So that's why we recommend specific dates, but you can see whatever fits for you. And then your project should take 12 months, not more, not less. It should be realizable in 12 months. But we give you a time span of one and a half years in case you have family or work commitments in Brazil that make it impossible or that make it necessary for you to return to Brazil once. Uh, then you can also, if your host agrees, you can split your uh, project into time frames. You can start a bit later, a bit earlier, whatever um, suits your commitments that you might have in Brazil. The recommendation here again is to start in October and do it until the next September, because that also fits very well with the group activities that I talked about, which is the, there is an opening conference when everybody is there, which is in November. Then there is a halftime retreat with everybody, which is in the European spring of the year after you start. And then there's the famous Berlin meeting with meeting the chancellor, which is then in the summer, usually around June, July. So this is the, the recommendation that we give you for the time frame. If you have questions about that, feel free to ask um, this uh, this. Uh, Graphic is also on our website if you want to look at it with more time. Um, and that brings me to the end of my presentation. There are three important things that I would like to remind you of. The first is the application deadline, which is the 15th of October. So please don't forget about that, that you have to have everything until then. Then if there are questions that you don't manage to get answered today or that you think of later or that are very specific to your situation, for example, about entry requirements or uh, things like that, please feel free to write to our info email address that is info at avh.de. There we have some very uh, well-prepared colleagues who know all the little rules and everything that they need to know to answer your questions. And it's always the easiest if you send them an email with your CV and with your question, and then you also get the clearest answer. So if you have something specific or if there is a question that today we don't manage to answer, please feel free to reach out to them. And of course, you can visit our website um, if you need this information about the hosts or if you have other other things, because actually all the information that we talk about today here and more, you will also find it on the website. So, Stefanie, that brings me at the end of my presentation. And I give Thank back to you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Um, I think it's very interesting, the questions that we are already getting. Out. Um, before we move forward to this first Q&A session with the alumni, I would um, like to say that 
You can find the link to the website that Sarah mentioned on the description of this video, so down below or in the com in the chat section. We already posted it there as well. So if you want to check it out while you're listening to our Q&A session, you can do that just clicking on that link. So Sarah, you told us a lot about the program, a lot about the structure of it. And I think there's no one better to talk about all of these questions than people who went through it or who are going through it now. So I'd like to um, welcome Becci and Barbara to talk to us a little bit about their own experience. So Becci is actually from Ceará and lives in Salvador, right? She was uh, in a fellow in 2018 and 2019. And Barbara is from Minas Gerais, from BH, and is currently in Frankfurt. So we are having a very international event with Sarah and Barbara here and um, is developing the program still. So she's still in the process. So if you guys have already questions for alumni or people who are going through it, you this is the time for it. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your time, Betty and Barbara as well. And I would like to hear a little bit about how you got to know the program, first of all, and how your experience was to select an area or a project that you wanted to develop. Betty, do you want to start? Yes, it's a pleasure. Hi, hi everybody. It's always great to be here, um, um, attending to this invitation of Alexander from Humboldt Foundation. Sara, uh, it was great watching to your presentation because it brought me so many beautiful memories about my fellowship. It was such a life-changing experience. And uh, I was glad to see that despite the, the pandemic, the program uh, shaped itself to, to, to guarantee this life-changing experience to, to the current fellows. And so I was a, I was a fellow um, in 2018-19, as Stephanie said, I, I am a arts manager, a cultural manager. I worked here in Salvador in a program of youth orchestras until 2018. And then I, I, develop, I developed a project about a uh, cultural, um, about quality management for cultural organizations. And it led to, to, to two digital publications and a website called uh, qualityforculture.org. And I had the, the lucky to have as host Professor Dr. Martin Zeroth, the director of the Institute of Arts and Media Management in, in Hamburg. And all the process to, to reach into him and to, and to defining the, the research topic was, I would like to say, it was, it came really natural because um, I was lucky to get to know him during a international training for cultural leaders in the end of 2016 but it was a short program just a few days but i but i got to know him personally and a few months after in the beginning of 2017 i i knew about the fellowship searching for fellowships in germany in the daad website and portal and then I, I was already um, thinking about the topic. I knew I wanted to research something about cultural management broadly, not about orchestras specifically, my field of work. And then I, I got in touch with him asking two things. Mm -hmm. First, if he would like to be my host, and if not, if he would like to recommend me to someone interested in this topic. And for my luck, he, he said yes, and it was the beginning of a relationship, and he helped me a lot shaping the project. But I know that my experience is not the rule because I knew many fellows who had no previous contact with the host, many people that, that really looked online for organizations related to the research topic, and it works also. Uh, but I would I would really recommend you to to pay attention to to the selection of the host because it is key to all the fellowship experience 
in Germany. And I don't know if I spoke too much, and maybe Barbara can share her experience as well. Thank you. <laughs> Not at all, Betch. It was it was great. So, Barbara, how did you get to know the program and how was your process of getting a project and a host? Well, thank you, Stephanie. It's really a pleasure to be here. And thank you for the invitation. Two years ago, it was me watching this live and YouTube live. And now I'm here. It's really, really a pleasure to help potential applicants from Brazil. And yes, my, my experience was... Uh, a little bit different from that. Um, I, I got to know the, the fellowship from, um, on the internet. I was looking for opportunities to, to study abroad. It's my first experience. It was, it's been my first experience abroad, um, studying and researching abroad, and, but it was like an old dream for me. And I heard about this fellowship and I, it was a perfect match for my specific moment in my career. I was working in the, I, I'm still working in the government of Minas Gerais in Brazil. And uh, I work with prevention of corruption and enforcement of anti-corruption law. So uh, the process of developing my idea for my project was kind of similar from that because I it was natural as well. I wanted to, well, corruption is a, global problem so it's natural that we want to um, face this issue in a more in a broader perspective that was my idea so i designed a sketch of a project um, regarding anti-corruption policies how to improve how to have insights from germany and also from europe because we had the opportunity to go to other countries and um, yeah that was my in initial idea and I found my host also looking for institutions in Germany. I didn't have contact um, initially in Germany. And so my process was um, sending emails and I, I had some contacts in Brazil that knew people in Germany. So it's, it's a, it, this process of finding a host is already part of the procedure because you already show that you are, uh, you have some leadership skills, you have to find this host, you have to send emails. I think I sent more than 20 emails. And it's, and what the professor, my, my current, my host, Professor Christoph Buschat from the Goethe Univers University, he accepted. And he also, this is really important, what Beth said about the uh, relationship with the host because he helped me to improve my, my project. And because we are talking about a, a, a professional exchange, but it's still a research and it's Humboldt Foundation. So we need to have a very good, consistent project with methodology and uh, objectives and outputs and impact to society. So he helped me a lot to um, improve, to be more focused on my project. So I, I'm now studying uh, focused on corporate liability for corruption. And yes, that was my my creativ creativity process of designing my project and finding uh, the host. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to answering other questions that may have here. Thank you, Barbara. Interesting to see how the different uh, processes went with looking for a host. Sara, I would like to ask you a question just so that we can clear this um, uh, topic of the host because it was a, a question that we got beforehand. Um, it was a question from Carlos Eduardo, he's from Sao Paulo, and he was asking, uh, can the host be an individual or does it has to be someone or that is related to an entity or does it has to be an institution and a university? How can we define that? Because I already saw already some questions on the chat as well. I think this would be nice for us to clear up. Yeah, thank you. That's a very important question and very important to answer. I think also, I also wanted to say we have by chance now here uh, two people who are hosted by a university professor, but that's not necessarily whatsoever. What is very important is the host is always an individual. So we use the word host, but actually the word mentor would be better. So it's always a person that commits to hosting you. 
but this person has to be embedded in a German institution. So they don't, I also saw it in the in the comments, they don't have to be German by nationality. They can also be any other nationality, but they have to work for a German institution. And that is because, I don't know if you saw it in my presentation, but host institutions get also get a support for offering you an office or offering you whatever. They also get some money for that. And that we cannot pay that to a person. We have to pay that to an institution. And that's why you have to think of the host. It's the host is a person, but has to be embedded in an institution, has to have a job at an institution. But this can also be an own organization of this person. They can have their own business that also works. They can work in a very big institution. That doesn't matter. They just need to have some legal form of, of working in Germany. But the host is always a person. So you don't you don't write to Siemens and you say, can Siemens host me? You write to a person who works for Siemens and you say, can you host me? So that is that's very important. And it doesn't have to be a professor. We also have artists, we have NGO workers, we have all kind of different people hosting um, hosting fellows. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Sana. And before I call Dr. Roschmann back to our q and I would like to, to do a quick question to Barbara and Beth about German. Did you guys uh, speak German before you went to, to the fellowship? Ein bisschen. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I have studied uh, by my own. Um, initiative. I took I took a year course in the Goethe Institute here in Salvador because I was so eager to get the fellowship that I thought that maybe this could be a, a benefit for me. And it was indeed because when I went to Germany, um, I would say that that my level in, increased a little bit faster during the three months of intensive German course. So I could speak a little bit of German, even though I developed my project in English and also in Portuguese, having some command of German was really important for me to, to take lessons at the university because they granted me the free access to all the seminars, also to, to, to solve some, some bureaucratic pro uh, problems and to take part in the cultural life in Hamburg, so I could go to events and plays and movies. So it was really important and make some friendships as well. Was well, no. it the same for you, Barbara? No, unfortunately not. I started <laughs> from scratch. <laughs> but when I heard about, uh, when I knew that I was approved, I immediately started a German course. Uh, but I highly recommend starting as soon as possible because it's knowledge, it's something that you you won't waste anyway so just start and because it really helps i i regret so much not beginning at before because um i miss i'm i'm learning of course but um the foundation um pays for us the intensive course and after us we can continue to study german but it's super hard as you probably know and yeah so start as soon as you can it's uh, as as Beth said. I, uh, it's to be more integrated, to be to see things. I'm starting now to to learn more effectively, and still struggling a lot. But yeah, start as soon as possible. Well, congratulations to both of you for doing this and for for learning German. It is really not a very easy language, but it's a very interesting language to learn. I think especially in some areas where you have German authors that are very, very known. And so if you can read that in the original, it's also very interesting. So I'd like to add Dr. Uh, Christian Roschmann back to our Q&A session as a member of the selection committee, because we also have some questions uh, regarding this. And I would like to um, start with one, Dr. Roschmann, that you actually mentioned in the beginning. And I think it's very interesting to hear that once again. And maybe Beth and Barbara can complete that answer with their perspective of this process. You mentioned that you are looking for that person who has that leadership potential. Of course, there's a project involved. There's this application involved. But what do you mean by 
we are looking for the person who is a, a future leader of Brazil. What does that mean for this, uh, these future applicants that are hearing us right now? Uh, <laughs> well, it is, it is um, um, if you meet the right individuals, you will automatically feel that this is the right person. It's not necessarily only a technical question. Uh, uh, who has passed an exam and is graduated from university is by definition someone intelligent, but that's sort of, sort of not sufficient in the sense that you would like to find someone who can actually, if you talk to the person or if you meet the person, uh, if the person enters the room, the way they behave, the way they act, the way they uh, 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 spread energy about talking about the project, to be honest, it, to me personally, it doesn't really make that much of a difference what the project is about. What I want to feel and what I want to sense from that individual is that that person is energetic and enthusiastic about her project or his project. And that that project somehow helps that person uh, in progression of his or her professional career when back to Brazil. I think that's a bit because um, um, uh, I tell this to my kids, I don't really care what they do for as long they, if they want to become and if someone wants to become successful in whatever he does or she does, this individual must be, yeah, he must convince me about it. It doesn't really matter what it is for as long as there's energy and you feel that there's passion in the project and that this ties in with the overall program objective to identify guys who will, once they return back to Brazil, be leaders and be bridge builders in relation to Brazil. And I really appreciate Batchi and Barbara learning German. I know it's very hard. Actually, my kids, to my complete embarrassment, don't speak German. Um, they speak a little, but they don't really speak well um, because they, yeah, they grew up in Brazil, but they're growing up in Brazil, so they have not, well, they are technically Germans, and that's actually embarrassing to a certain extent. <laughs> uh, uh, and you guys took this up. I think this is great. Uh, it is tough. But if you want to learn a different culture and understand how people are ticking and how to influence people, of course, you need to speak a language, not necessarily only to make communicate yourself. In Germany, many people speak English, so it shouldn't normally not that much of a problem. But to really understand the jokes, the culture, the way, uh, for example, when I moved to Brazil when I was a child, I spoke, I learned Portuguese as well over time, but I didn't understand the jokes because in order to understand the jokes, you need to understand TV, you need to understand the novella, you need to understand the, uh, the, 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 the context uh, on where you are, and you will only be able to understand the context if you speak the native language, either way, in either direction. And, and what you guys are doing now, Barbara and Betty, or Betty already finished, but Barbara at present in Frankfurt, uh, is, is, is just great because you, 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 this is, this is what, what I would be looking for someone uh, in the program who is really willing to learn about a different culture, get into, into, into is excited about his or her project, and then that project coming back to Brazil, to Baba, then she will hopefully be able to better understand the other side of the ocean, <laughs> uh, uh, how Germans tick, uh, uh, because they tick differently. But once you know them better, you can actually work it to your favor. Because of course it's, and I'm not talking about manipulation, I'm talking about um, um, uh, a, 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 a bridge building function. And these are people, Barbara and Betty, who will bring others in Brazil into the direction and into and give when you are back, you give basically the Brazilians, Brazilians, the context of how to deal with the Germans. And, and, and if you now ask me, Stephanie, well, how do you identify this in a 30 minutes conversation? It's very hard. It's very hard. Uh, uh, but this is then to a certain extent also a good test, because if that person is not able to give me that feeling or to give me that impression, uh, maybe it's not the right one. Yeah, the commitment has to has to go through the screen or if you're talking in person. 
and the commitment has to be there. So, Sana, uh, I'm sorry, Barbara and Betsy, I'd like to ask you, how was that uh, pr part of the process for you? When you had the interview with the selection committee, uh, how did you feel and how did you um, plan to show them your project and to show them yourselves? Do you want to start, Barbara? Yes. Um, I tried to, uh, first of all, try to connect all the documents, the main documents, motivation letter, my CV, my backgrounds and my project. Um, I, I was thinking all the time that they must uh, complement each other and also the interview. So um, I and especially they, mu they must converge to uh, reflect my personal interests and my passions. So um, it's just uh, we have to express how we will achieve the goals that we have in our lives. So it's more about, I think it's uh, Dr. Hoshman said, uh, it's not about the project and also the foundation has this uh, phrase uh, they, they sponsor people and not projects and that's all about this program it's all about that um, we have to show ourselves we have to tell our our own histories in in this uh, documentations and in the motivation letter and in the project and they have to complement themselves and um i try to in, in terms of leadership skills i think what's what is important is to show that you have the skills and the abilities to make connections with concrete situations of course you just don't have to show them oh i can't do that but how you did that how you managed to connect different institutions in your work and if you work to an institution you don't uh, get uh, only in this institution, you, you get to know other institutions and you can build bridges with other people. And I think that was, uh, that was, I was trying to show them that I was able to do, to build bridges. I, I, so I showed them some initiatives in, in my work and some activities that I, I, I was doing that was related to these specific skills of um, building bridges and connecting people and also building trusty relationships. This is something uh, that I, I, I showed them that I was able to do during my, my recent uh, short, but some leadership experience that I have so far. Well, I couldn't agree more with Barbara. I tried to do the same as well. And also having in mind that, well, the first of all, I think it is important to, to, to reinforce what Mr. Horschman said. Leadership is such a broad concept. So it is not specifically related to the position that you occupy now in the organization in which you work in, but, but much more about what you envision for yourself and the impacts of your project and also the previous experience in in, in some projects, initiatives, and and etc. And I also I I took a lot of attention to the documents that 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 um, that that are also part of the selection because the interview is like the last phase. But before this, they analyze whatever you submit. To them so you have really to pay attention as Barbara said to the connection between the the presentation letter uh, who you choose who you invite not to write the other letters what your host says about you and also all the documents that you you apply to to confirm your experience so it has all to be related and also pay attention to the translation size because you have to translate this either to English or German. It takes some time, so don't leave this to the last minute. And, and also, I would recommend you to, to, to look for support and to ask someone to read this for you, to give you some tips as someone who knows you and your project, and also to pay attention to the whole application process, which is not only the final interview. Uh, I would have one one additional comment. Sorry, Sarah, just before because it's I think what Barbara said is um, 
you leadership is, is of course, well we, uh, prepare yourself for that question because the question will come and it is a question it's not easy to be answered and it's different for anyone however um, um, um you you must have the potential for leadership and you must have proven that or shown that somehow for example if then if i ask someone okay how do you picture yourself in five and ten years from now because the whole thing is um, <laughs> to get exposure in Germany, then get back and then build on that and, and gain with that uh, visit. And then if that person tells me, well, I have no idea what I'm going to do in five or 10 years. Well, uh, if, if that person doesn't know what they want to do in five or 10 years, how should I know? <laughs> or how, how should the world know that people need? So you need to have a plan and an idea, at least conceptually, what you want to achieve. Because if, if you don't have a clear path in front of yourself, what you want to achieve, the world will not give it for free. You need to have the energy and need to show the energy that you have to, to be someone who builds his own path. In what area Sarah, you, ever, you, you choose. Sarah, you wanted to compliment also? Yeah, thank you, because I think it's a very a very important topic and very important things were said. And it's always it's a question we get a lot because it's also difficult to define. And we also don't want to define it very specifically. What is leadership? I just wanted to make a few comments, um, maybe to make it a bit more concrete. If you just can't come out of university, then we want to see that at least during university you were active or engaged, that you participated in some extracurricular activities or that you set up some um, some event or we, we want to see pro that you are proactive and that you shape your your CV and your life around you and not just I did this course and then that course and then I graduated and that's it. So that's maybe a bit a more concrete um, indication. And also you might be very insecure if you just finished finished your grad if you just graduated you think I don't have as much to show as a person who already worked for five years but there you also should really consider from a person who already worked for five years we expect substantially more so if you already also have a few years of experience then we really want to see how did you how did you shape your career how did you take it into your own hands how did you maybe influence other people with your choices so uh, that's always think relatively to the point where you are. And uh, another very important aspect is that um, we want to reach a very diverse group of people. And it is, um, it is sadly the case that there are many people who think of themselves less than other people think of them. And they might think, I don't have enough. When they hear us talk, they think, oh, this is not for me because I am not this high flying uh, whatever. The people who have a bit more difficulties with self-confidence. And there I would really like to... Uh, to support you in talking to the people around you. We often see that in the recommendation letters, the people who write the recommendation letters can show us the leadership potential a lot better than the person themselves sometimes because they look from outside. So ask also them in time and then read them and talk to these people and talk to your friends and how would you describe me as a leader so that you also gain their self-confidence and that you get an understanding how how can i present myself how can i show what i have to what what's my potential so there i would uh, just want to add this like if now at this moment you think oh i'm not good enough for this please don't give up yet but talk to the people around you and 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 consider that it is a very broad thing and that and that there are many ways to show leadership potential and that often the people around you are the best one to help you to bring that across that's a very good um, uh, bridge to the next uh, topic that I wanted to, that is the recommendation letter, because we got a, a question beforehand and I saw also, I think Havana made a question about this um, in the chat as well. So um, André from Brasilia, he was uh, asking uh, you guys, who should sign the recommendation letter? And then I would I wanted to ask Beth and Barbara, who did you um, ask and why did you choose that person? Uh, can I start? <laughs> no, no, please, Barbara. Please. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, will, I, I asked for, I, I think recommendation letter is, you have to ask for someone 
um, two people, actually we need two, uh, who really knows you and your work. So um, I could ask for recommendation letter of someone in a higher position in my institution, but I prefer, I think was a good choice to ask for my boss immediately, so my superior. So he really knows my job. He, we are working every day uh, together and he, so he, he can, uh, he's the right person to talk about me and my leadership skills. And also my supervisor at masters and doctorate. So we know each other from, uh, I think for 12 years. So, and also in, during university, we did some activities that are not strictly academic. We had a project, um, human rights project. So in that moment, I think it was, uh, he could already yeah, me, know and know my work and some leadership skills. So um, that was my choice and I think it was really good. They could write, uh, they really know me very well. Mm. Uh, in my case, I did for the first letter, as Barbara I did, I, I asked for a letter of my boss in the in the NGO in which I work. I was one of the directors, so I asked the general director, and I think it was more, it made sense because we worked together for eight years. Yeah, that's so, he could say a lot of good things about my, my leadership skills and all the things I did. And, and to confirm what I said, he might see me as well. And, and for the second letter, I took a big shot because I really took advantage of all the potential relationships I might have or my organization had with, with Germany. So the youth orchestra in which I work in, um, for those not from Brazil, it is the Neo Jibá project, the Núcleos Estaduais de Orquestra Juvenis Infantis da Bahia. And the youth orchestra had played in, in, in two opportunities for German representatives from the government. So I took this, this chance to, 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 to connect with the, with the honorary consul of Germany here in Salvador. She, she knew my organization, but she didn't knew me. And so I had a meeting with her. I explained about the fellowship she already knew, and she was super enthusiastic to support someone from Salvador to apply to this fellowship. So now she gave me a letter confirming my experience in the organization and so on. And so I took this big shot because I thought that maybe, maybe presenting the letter of some authority from Germany could help. I don't know if it did, but well, <laughs> but it was the strategy that I used. Interesting. So just for us to tackle once again, the questions of the hosts are always um, a lot of them. And there sometimes are um, already informations that we gave out here and that Sarah mentioned during her presentation. So I would just like to get these, I think it's four questions that we have still about the host and we go them uh, out truly so that we don't have to, to um, spend so much time on this uh, once again. But uh, we got a question from, also a question that came beforehand from Sue Ling. she's from Kamburiu. And she asked us if the host can be anyone related to the to the field that she's going to do the project in. So, Sarah, you mentioned this. It would be highly recommended that it would be someone that is related to the project so that uh, you have a situation like Beth and Barbara that the host also helps you developing and shaping your project during this uh, one year that you're doing it in Germany. So... Yes, and I think Sarah also mentioned before, um, we had a question about, uh, does it have to be a German person or not? It just has to be an individual that's linked to an institution, an NGO, a university in Germany. So I think this answers, I think, two or three questions as well in the chat. And uh, I think the last question was about 
uh, projects if they need to be related to a specific city in Germany? And so, Sarah, the answer is no, right? Correct. So you can pick any city in Germany, whatever makes sense for your project. Of course, it it doesn't make sense if you're writing about Bavaria that that you live in Berlin. <laughs> but as long as it makes sense for your project, you can be anywhere in Germany. Yeah. Okay. So I think we tackled all the the questions about the host. But once again, Sarah mentioned this, and I like to to do this again. This email address that you're seeing here on the screen, info at afh.de, is um, the email that you can send your questions. There is a team that will answer this to you. So if you have further questions about the host, um, you can also find some more information on the website of the of the AFH. So we can uh, move on to other topics such as um i think this is interesting to mention again sarah you did this in the presentation i'd like to go into that so um people who can apply and uh, there have been some questions about uh degrees and how long so if you could summon up that once again i think it would be very interesting for people to to hear maybe they got in after your presentation to the live so yeah yeah, so you can you can apply up to 12 years after you finished your first degree. And this date is, we count the date when you would start your fellowship. So the 1st of October of the year that you would start and we count 12 years back from that. I would like to point out that if you have children or if you had a sickness for some time or had to take care of a very sick relative, then I would very much recommend that you write to this email info at avh.de because we have some um, some possibilities to discount times that you were not able to work. Um, and then sometimes you are also eligible, even though it's a bit longer than these 12 years. But in general, it counts your first bachelor um, in, in Brazil and then 12 years afterwards. It cannot be more than 12 before you start in the fellowship. And we also always show on our website when you when you look, we show like, OK, the if you're applying this year, then that's the we use this date to calculate that. Thank you. I would also like to put on a question here that we got from the chat from Joyce. It's, uh, I think, an interesting question. I don't remember that we had such a question before. So um, she wants to know if the applicants can have a full time job in Germany during the fellowship program. Is this possible? Is this I guess that's for me the question. Uh, no, we really want you, and and I think Barbara and Betty will also um, will also agree with this. We want you to be fully. Uh, present in the project for your fellowship so that's why we also say your project has to be doable in 12 months um, and really has to bring about something and we don't believe that this is possible next to a full-time job so and we also pay very well so you also don't need to have a job so uh, it is not possible to do a fellowship next to a full-time job also not in brazil you cannot have a job in brazil still and do the fellowship in germany I wanted to go into that topic again, um, Sarah, that you just mentioned of the financial help that you give, because we also had a question about um, a potential applicants who have a family. And if you could go into this uh, information again, I think it would be very helpful. Yeah, so in general, there are um, there are lump sums for people who bring their spouse and their children also to to pay for the, the travel costs and for the for the costs they have here. I don't know, uh, Barbara or Betty, did you have children or did you bring a partner? No, no. Um, but um, I would I think it's a bit specific for me to tell you now exactly what uh, what everything is possible, because it also depends on whether your partner has a job and how old your children are and stuff like that. But um, please feel free to look also in the program information and on our website. And if if that's still not clear to you and you really want to know specific, like if I bring my two children who are this and this old and my partner who is this in this situation, then please also write to this email address, because I think that will give you more the specific answer that you need 
um, than I can do now. But in general, there is always support for family members who are traveling alone. Which ties in with what you asked, answered in the first question. It's not possible to work full time while you get the scholarship. So the scholarship is, in essence, uh, 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 paying your expenses so that you can live well. And if you have children or uh, relatives you want to take along, I think they will be well taken care of such that someone who wants to do that can actually um, um, have a good living in, in Germany while there. That's the whole purpose of it. Thank and you, Dr. Waschmann. By case basis, because the situations are different. Thank you. I would also like to ask you, Dr. Waschmann, uh, we have here uh, two uh, examples of projects, one in the culture area, one in the anti-corruption area. Um, have you, during these two years, last two years in this pandemic scenario, are there any projects or areas that are more uh, visible in projects, or how has it been? Has it has no? It's 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 it's, it's very uh, it's very diverse, and yeah. uh, I think one of the things I like being um, a part and uh, I'm honored by being part of the selection committee is actually one you meet a lot of very interesting people. <laughs> it's very diverse um, and you learn a lot about stuff I would never ever have thought of uh, because I'm of course embedded in my little world, uh, but uh, this opens really the mind to other stuff, which I find very, very uh, interesting and, and, and enriching. Um, it goes from in particular culture to uh, a, a city. Uh, there were so many interesting projects um, uh, and, and which you see one project dealt with the Lago da Batata key in Sao Paulo, how to develop that place further, taking Berlin as an example in terms of urbanization and whatnot. So that's stuff which I <laughs> I personally find very uh, interesting. Uh, or in Salvador, we had a couple of projects, also in particular on the cultural area of things, uh, music, uh, uh, I, 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 and that's why um, no, it's 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 uh, it's uh, it's it's. Uh, I think overall, what we try to achieve is that we have in each of the years a good mix, uh, so that we, we we do not have all the candidates from São Paulo alone, <laughs> but spread this out over Brazil, uh, 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 so that we have a fair balance and a fair representation of Brazil as a whole in the mix of candidates we approve. I think this is a very interesting topic for us to talk about as well, because this is um, important for the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, uh, from what we understand, Sarah, as well, that we have uh, representatives from all over Brazil and from all different areas. And this is also one of our tasks here as a supporter of this program and to promote this program here in Brazil. And it has been very interesting to see. We started, I think, uh, promoting this program as a chamber in 2015. We started this, of course, in Sao Paulo because we, we our headquarters here in Brazil are in Sao Paulo. But during the last, I think, four years, we have been able to do this online as well. So pre-pandemic, we were doing this online and we could achieve even more people and doing road shows as well. And Beth told us before that she was able to go to one of the one of the events in Salvador that we held. So this is very interesting, and it's nice to also see the comments of of the people here in the chat and the questions that we get beforehand. That uh, pretty much every region in Brazil is represented here, or that uh, we have at least one person that is watching from a different region here in Brazil. So this is also very nice um, to have you all engaged in all the interest and in that uh, you have all this information spread out in Brazil. So uh, what I would also like to ask, um, I think Sarah, maybe this is uh, these are some questions that are more related to you and that maybe they can also be um, better answered by the colleagues at info at afh.de. But I think it would be interesting um, to hear this uh, first from you. Um, there was a question regarding the host again, but it was <laughs> related to the recommendation letter. So can the host and uh, be a host and also be 
a recommendee in the letter? No, uh, that's not possible. So we also, the recommendation letters is also for you to show your network and that would also not be of interest in if you limit your network to that. And of course the host has an interest in, in, in supporting you. So then we would say that that's a bit double information. The host also has to write a statement in support. So that would actually be double. And that's why uh, the recommendation letters cannot come from the host. Okay, thank you. Dr. Roschmann, you mentioned this um, in, during our Q&A session again, and I think it's interesting for us to repeat this information because um, there are some questions about staying in Germany and if people can do something different afterwards in Germany. But I think uh, you mentioned this already, and the whole objective of this is that Germany is promoting and helping future leaders of Brazil to develop a project, yes, in Germany. But I think the objective is to come back and to apply all this knowledge here, right? It's not an exile program, um, uh, in a sense. <laughs> uh, 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 I think if someone wants to stay on for another year or go somewhere else, uh, immediately after the program, I don't see any problem with that. But the whole purpose of it is, of course, to build a bridge, right? And the bridge is a two-way street, in a sense that it's not, it's not the, actually, it would be even counterproductive because what the German government want is to identify leaders in Brazil who will then develop out of Brazil the relationship with Germany. So it, it's not the idea, it's not to pick the, to cherry pick the best guys in Brazil and then take them to Germany. That's not the whole, that's not the purpose of the program. And this must be crystal clear. Um, and that's why it's important that the program one way or the other, or the project one way or the other, helps that candidate to progress with his or her career back home in Brazil. Um, and because if, 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 if for example, if you, if, you, if you make the next step in your professional career and this program, you can then show this to your employer or, uh, or you gain experience so that you can become uh, uh, independent and entrepreneur and that this experience helps you with that, uh, with that progression. That's the whole thing about it. Um, because then from a German perspective, what, what the German government has achieved is identified a, a bright, young, uh, entrepreneurial or smart person who has had help from Germany in a sense that it helped progress the career and then um, is embedded in the German culture, knows a little bit about Germany, speaks the culture. And you guys, once you have done this one year in Germany, you will have met with the German chancellor, you will have been at the uh, at the STF, basically the Brazilian, the German Supreme Court. You will have seen lots of institutions. You will have toured Germany. You will know more about Germany than many Germans actually do. <laughs> because when you live in your own country, you often do not travel or do not really go into those details. So, and, and, that, and with that luggage coming back to Brazil, the whole purpose is then that these individuals have a certain affinity with Germany and will start acting as a bridge builder in relation to Germany out of Brazil. Thank you. And Sarah and, and Dr. Roschmann, I would like to ask you also a question from the chat. Maybe if you can uh, remember some of the projects that you saw. Dr. Roschmann also mentioned some um, related to, to Sao Paulo and Largo do Batata. But it, do you have any examples um, besides the both examples that we have here from Batch and Barbara so that people can have a, a more broader view of, uh, of the diversity of the areas that you can develop a project in? Is this question to me? To you and to Sarah. Okay. Start well, go yeah, okay. One one which comes immediately to mind. Yes, uh, last last year we had a, a candidate. She came from Sao Paulo originally, then moved when she was twenty to um, to the Amazon to Manaus, and worked in an NGO. Uh, and her program and her project now, after she worked there for eight years or so, uh, was uh, about how to develop sustainable projects in the Amazon region 
and uh, uh, while um, uh, even economic projects, uh, farming of fishes and whatnot, which do not conflict with the environment, uh, which was the topic uh, from, a, from a project perspective, she was very convincing and she actually moved with her husband to Germany for the year. Um, uh, and yes, she had a child as well. So this was, um, and, 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 and she was technically originally from Sao Paulo, but lived for the last 10 years or eight years in, in the Amazon region uh, on a quite, uh, not even in Manaus, but actually upriver um, uh, was, was very, very interesting and very, very diverse, I guess, as well. Yeah, I, I think I can give many examples. I, I'm also thinking of a, a, we had a person who was uh, doing um, law in internet rights and rights of children and and um, privacy of children. So, so very things that you also usually don't think about. Um, I actually... There is such a variety. I thought what maybe would be more interesting for you instead that I tell you now three projects, if you go on our website and not the specific one for the German Chancellor Fellowship, but from the Alexander von Humboldt, you have a possibility to search our network. And there, uh, I can also post the link in a bit, there you can uh, you can filter the program. So then you could filter uh, the, the German Chancellor Fellowship for Brazil. And then you can actually see what since 2014 everybody has been doing. You see the title of the project, you see their host. And I think that is maybe a more comprehensive and more interesting uh, way to, to explore the projects. Um, but yeah, you will see that there's very different um, very different projects. So I'll, I'll look up the link and I'll post it. Thank you. Well, we're moving to the end of our live uh, transmission. But before we go, I would uh, like to ask the four of you, if you could give an advice to everyone that is watching and um, that are interested in applying, what would it be? A short advice that maybe you would say, ah, if someone said that to me when I was applying or um, Sarah and Dr. Roschmann, from your perspective as members of the selection committee, what would it be? Do you want to start, Barbara? Yeah, um, very simple advice would be to um, check the website and register and um, just be familiar with the application process, look at the documents that are required, the questions. So, because some people just try to write and then put on the website, don't do that, do that right away because you can um, review the process, you can save it and go back. So do that the most that you can as soon as possible. And also uh, get in touch with former uh, Bukas, former fellows. So um, I did that. It worked really, really well for me. And um, reach us uh, out on LinkedIn, for instance. I would advise to go to the fellows in portrait in, in the website. So you can see all the projects from each year and maybe choose someone who has a project related to your idea. So get in touch with this person, with more than one, and get some help. Because this is all about, um, this fellowship is all about networking and support. So we are always very help, very happy to help uh, new applicants from Brazil, definitely. That would be my tip. Can I go next? Because I will have to step out in a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 and then I leave you guys. Uh, uh, be passionate about your project, be passionate about your career, and show us that you have the energy to take this through. Uh, this Thank is what you. Expect from someone who wants to win this scholarship. Betsy, what yeah, about so, you? Yeah. So I would basically say the same. If you believe in your project, believe in yourself and go for it. And if you are not selected for the first time, you can apply again. And I know many, many fellows that applied twice, even three times, that they were selected, they were not approved, and then applied again because they believed in their project. And, and besides this, now there is this, 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 this sentence I liked a lot that 
good luck benefits the well prepared people. So uh, in order to have good luck in the selection, be well prepared. I pay attention to every uh, everything that is required. I, required. I take time to to prepare um, a good project, to to get good letters, to translate your documents, and yeah, can go for it. Sarah, I think this, this is all very good advice. Everything I also would have said maybe to. Uh, so I agree with everything. Start networking in time and and take the application very seriously. Really read what are we asking of you and try to answer that and not just some letter that you anyway already had. But I think most of all, be aware that we really want a diverse set of, of fellows. And, and don't fear that just because you don't see a face like yours in the fellows so far, or if just there's only one fellow of your region, so far don't don't let that hold you back so just dare to apply and as i said before look talk to people to find what are your selling points and 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 like dr roschman said convince us do something that you do with passion because that that is noticeable that makes a difference so stick stick to what is important to you and always have in the back of your mind that we are looking for bridge builders so also in your application process remind yourself of that and make clear how do i want to become a bridge builder between brazil and germany how do i see that in my future how does my project relate to that because that is one of the most important things that we look for and that might really help you to get through if you can communicate that to us clearly um what you envision as a future bridge builder so focus on that Thank you very much. I think we had a lot of, of information here that is very useful for future applicants. I'd like to thank you once again, um, Sarah, for your time, for being here and for answering all the questions for your presentation. Also, Betch and Barbara, for your time, for being here and uh, talking about your experience. This is something that is very helpful for everyone that wants to be also a fellow. So thank you for taking your time. And I'd also like to thank um, the consulate, uh, the German consulate here in Sao Paulo for the continuous support for doing this live event and for also um, doing uh, the, the events in, in the residency here in Sao Paulo and of course uh, throughout Brazil. So thank you, uh, Mr. Weiss, for staying with us and for, for being present here. And of course, um, look once again at the website. The link is down below. It's in the chat. Also, if you have any specific questions, you can email the info at avh.de. And this live is going to be recorded. So you can also send this to someone that maybe wasn't able to watch it now live. So you can do this. Uh, of course, send the link to your friends or to a person who you think is um, could be interesting. And we're also going to post the link that Sarah mentioned um, in a bit. So the, the link to for you to search for other projects and for other um, areas that the foundation is, is active in. So I hope you had a good time, that you also had fun listening to us today and that we could help you. And we wish you all very good luck um, in applying for the German Chancellor Fellowship. And we will see each other again probably next year, but hopefully we will talk to each other during this period. So thank you once more and have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you.